Steel Power has developed a novel semiconductor device for the electric vehicle industry. And with me is the CEO, Dan Berdar, to talk about what this is, how does it work, what does this mean for the industry? So let's just start, Dan, explain exactly what this semiconductor device is. Sure. Uh, semiconductors are used for controlling the flow of energy. Power switches is basically what they are. Okay. And they're really important in a whole variety of applications. You know, you've got them in your home, whether you realize it or not. They're in your refrigerator, your washer and dryer. Conventional uh, combustion vehicles have them, but electric vehicles have a lot of them. If you have solar energy, they, they play a significant role. What our technology does, it's much more efficient than the conventional devices that are out there. So it'll, it's really impactful in terms of what it can mean for things like renewable energy or electric vehicles. So okay. for example, electric vehicle, if it used our technology, you could get seven to 10% more range out of the vehicle because it operates more efficiently. So if you think about the range anxiety, you know, the ability to get more range out of the batteries on the vehicle is pretty important. Yeah, no, that's uh, actually a huge because I've heard a lot of people say, well, I can't quite get the range or it takes me too long to fill up. And I, you know, so that could be a game changer for the industry. It could. We're, we're already working with some of the world's largest automobile manufacturers. We're, we're hoping to be working with more as time goes on here. But what a lot of people don't realize is the semiconductors in an electric vehicle are actually the second largest cost component after the batteries. So they actually make up a pretty substantial cost. So if you can come up with a technology that is more efficient and lower cost, it can not only help bring up the performance of the electric vehicles, but also help contribute to lowering their cost. Very interesting. Now we've been hearing a lot about the computer chip shortage in this yes. sector. So do you build those in the US? Would this be a way that you could help with that? Yeah, currently, you know, the, we work with two semiconductor fabricators, both of whom are in the US, because we would like to do things domestically. We think there's a, a tremendous investment coming in the U.S. with people building manufacturing capacity to make devices. And our business model is to not own wafer fabrication facilities ourselves, but to actually get contracted services where you know, we can go to whoever provides us the best service at the best cost. And how new is this technology? And is it fully implemented into, or are you just kind of starting to talk to the electric vehicle companies? Uh, great question. You know, it's a technology that we invented a few years ago. Um, and we've been going through the process of developing the technology. Semiconductor devices take quite a bit of development because a lot of times it's not just the engineering and the physics behind how to design the device. Um, in our case, in particular, the challenges are how to make it. Uh, and the challenge for us has been typically when semiconductors are made, the wafers that are used are processed just on one side. But our device is bi-directional, so we have to process the wafer on both sides, putting really fine features on them to get the performance that we want. That's not commonly done. So a lot of the last couple of years for us have been developing those manufacturing processes with our partners to actually figure out how do you make a double-sided device. We're at the point now where we've come through that development and we are just beginning commercialization. So we intend to introduce our first commercial product towards the end of this year. Okay, so this might be the time where it really starts uh, being in the vehicles. You know, getting in the vehicles is kind of a long process, you know, because their design cycles are long, but fortunately our technology applies to a lot of other applications. So for example, solar energy, the use of batteries for energy storage, um, you know, for motor drives, a whole bunch of industrial applications that are out there will probably be our first source of revenues while we go through that evaluation and design process with the automobile manufacturers. Okay, very interesting. Now you are traded here, I'm at the NASDAQ, uh, market mm -hmm. site Times Square. Uh, you're a publicly listed company here. So uh, talk to me about the business, like the business of the business. Like how is that? How is the, you know, the public listing, all of that? You know, it's it's interesting. Sometimes there's a debate on whether being public or not, especially as a small company, is worth the cost and complexity of it. Yeah. Um, you know, I think particularly when you're in the technology business, which typically takes rather long cycles and needs access to capital, being a publicly listed company has tremendous advantages. It is worth the cost to do it. It's worth the complications that it takes to run the business. Uh, because that access to capital and, and getting those patient investors is really important to get a technology to market. Sure. Yeah. Oh, wow. Fascinating. Well, thank you. It's been very interesting to hear about Ideal Power. Thanks, Dan. Well, thanks, Jane. I appreciate it.